Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Silk by Devere. It plays two to four players, takes about 40 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. In the game Silk, you are a silk farmer. You are going to be corralling your silkworms, utilizing your shepherd into specific habitats to eat and then move along. You'll gain points by doing so, and you'll use your mastiff, your half dog, half goat thing, to scare away the oni. The oni is a mysterious mystical being or creature that goes around and eats silkworms, harvests them, and keeps them in its burrow until the next season to where it will devour them. And your opponents will be trying to do the same thing. You can control the oni, your opponents can as well, and you're going to utilize your different characters to move silkworm, whether it be your own or your opponents, into specific pastures. There's uh, three different ways the game will end, and once that triggers, everybody gets a single round of play, and then whoever has the most points is the victor in the game Silk. I'll show you what the game looks like and how it plays down below, then we'll come up and I'll give you my review of the game, and if you're interested, you can go ahead and pick it up. Link in the description. All right, let's go ahead and take a look down below. So here we have the game Silk set up for four players, and if you want to play with less players, you'll simply reduce the size of the grid here, but this is a six by five grid. You'll shuffle these, you'll flip them over, and you'll place the Oni on the Oni tile. It'll tell you how to do that, but it's fairly simple. Basically, when you flip them over, it'll go from the barren side to this side here. And there are three different types of tiles for points scoring one, two, and uh, or one, two, and three. And then, of course, on the back side is zero, which is not good. You don't want to gain points for the zero. Uh, you're also going to set up a certain number of these fences here, place them within reach of all players, and these four objectives, there's four objectives you can get in the game, similar to like Catan, in which you complete a goal, you'll flip it over, you'll gain a certain number of victory points, and then you'll leave it there, meaning no one else can get it. Uh, this is your point tracker, depending on the number of players, you'll take these little tokens here, place them next to the zero space here, and you'll progress throughout the board, and you'll go from zero all the way around to 50, and when you hit 50, if you do, flip this over and continue across. This is the action board, it'll have the six different action spaces with the pips from, from the die represented on each space, as well as the oni den. This is where the oni will eat your silkworm. Every single player is going to get a pool of resources, and you have four different types of resources. You're going to have your little silkworms, you're going to have your shepherd, you're going to have your uh, mastiff here, and your nursery. Uh, and based on the number of players, I believe you're going to be setting out uh, seven silkworm and then one of each of your specials. And to start off with, you'll, you'll select a player by rolling two die, whoever gets the highest number will go first, and you'll place two silkworms, and you can place the two silkworms uh, in one of two different ways, either two on one single tile that has this yellow farmland, or you could place one and one with a maximum number of silkworms three for each tile. So I'll just go ahead and place it like this, and then it'll go to the next player's turn simply from their supply, from the seven. You'll save the rest of these, you will not use these, and players will just keep doing that. So one and uh, one, and then the next player is gonna go ahead and do uh, one and one, and, um, oh, yeah, yeah. And then the next player is going to simply go one and one again, and you'll just keep doing that until all the spaces fill up. Uh, another thing to note, too, is if the spaces do end up getting uh, filled up, you are going to be able to place on the next uh, highest valued space, which is the rocks space. And remember, you can have the same silkworms on, uh, let's see, different color silkworms on the same space. That's not a problem. But once you uh, fill up a tile, meaning that once you get the tile to three silkworms, you'll have to then place on the next highest up, which is actually uh, not a bad thing. And uh, yeah, so that's basically how the game goes. I'll go ahead and finish setting this up here, just placing these guys down so that it fills up the board here. Now, as you can see, all these spaces are filled. So this guy will get to go on a two value space, which means all you have left are these guys here. Now your shepherd, your mastiff, and your nursery. And once again, turn by turn, you will be placing out the three. The rules for these guys is pretty simple. For the shepherd and the mastiff, you have to place on an adjacent space next to a silkworm of your color and it must be on an empty space. These guys may never share a space with anything, so he can go here because he's next to a yellow space. Uh, the other rule is for nurseries, when you place them down, that must be adjacent to a square with your silkworms, and you have to place it in an intersection, whether it be a plus intersection or a T intersection. Either of those is fine, provided that it has an adjacent worm of your color. And everybody is simply going to place the, all those out. So I'll just go ahead and do the super, super quick uh, variant <laughs> in which I place all these guys out.
Okay, and that's the setup for the game. Another thing to note too is with these nurseries, you have to be at least one tile away from any other, anybody else's nursery or two sections. So in this case, I could not place this here because that's only one section, but one and two, that is okay. Uh, one and two, one and two and uh, three, that's okay. Okay, and then you're gonna have the rest of these left over as your pool. These are gonna be your worms you're gonna be playing out throughout the game. And these are going to be your nurseries. You have a total of four nurseries and an extra eight different silkworms to place out. On your turn, it's fairly simple. You will take a silkworm and you can place it on a space that is either A, next to your nursery, or B, on a space that already has a silkworm. It's the first thing you do every turn, unless you do not have any silkworm from here, in which case you'll take it from here. If you have none, you'll take none. Then you'll roll these two die and you will get the two different values. In this case, I ended up getting a six and a four. You can place these in any order on this board here. And these are the six different actions you can take. So in this case, I would roll the six and the four, which means that I can uh, A, place a nursery, and B, move the Oni. The six actions are as follows. Placing a, another silkworm, moving your mastiff or your shepherd, uh, placing walls down, placing a nursery, and if you do not have a nursery to place, you can simply flip over a barren tile on into a non-barren tile. Uh, so basically if a tile was like this, you could flip it over. And then this one over here is you can have your silkworm eat. So for instance, if I wanted to as yellow, I could have my silkworm uh, eat right here. Uh, I would then flip this tile over and I would move this guy to an adjacent available space. And I would score points based on where he's at. And currently he is on uh, a green tile here, which would score me three times the number of silkworms, which is three points. And uh, then I would move my tracker up. Boop. Uh, the last thing you can do is move the Oni, and the Oni can simply move into a direction, and when he moves into silkworms, he eats them, putting them in his lair, um, and otherwise he'll just move into a basic space, and the characters that can move across the board are the Oni, the Shepherds, and the Mastiffs. So if you, for instance, have, oh, I don't know, a Mastiff here, you can move it across the board like that. Silkworms, however, cannot do that. And that's pretty much the basic idea of the game. You're just going to keep going around in turn order, taking a silkworm and placing it on the board, rolling your two die, uh, taking those die as actions, and then passing your turn. Another thing to note too is when you roll your die, let's say you rolled a one and a three, it was yellow's turn. Uh, let's say I wanted to actually get a two. I could spend a die to change either one of these, uh, uh, one pip down or one pip up, in which case now I can do my two action and my one. Or let's say that I had five points and I rolled two ones, but I really wanted that six. I could spend one, two, three, four, and five points to turn this one into a six. You can also turn a six into a one for one point. And that will allow you to make different choices in your actions to potentially score more points by the time the game ends. Um, there are these walls here, and these walls will be placed uh, from your nursery or an adjacent wall, and you're going to be attempting to build little, uh, little enclosures, and an enclosure is two tiles long. Remember though, uh, nothing can go through these spaces here except for uh, shepherds. They will protect you your worms from the onis, and if you build a small enclosure that just has one tile, it's actually not very good. You don't want to do that, so you want to do at least two or three. You'll also score points when you connect a uh, wall from a nursery to another nursery. You'll score points that way. And at the end of the game, you'll score points for enclosures that you control the most, nurseries next to. So in this case here, that would be a tie. But if I had a nursery here at the end of the game, I would actually score points, whereas this player would not because I have two adjacent nurseries to this enclosure. Uh, and then that's it. There's these guys here. These are objectives. Whenever you complete them, you'll score points instantly by flipping it over. This is an, being the first person to enclose off three different uh, tiles with the walls here. Uh, this one over here is placing out all of your uh, worms. Uh, this one over here is building a wall that connects, that goes five spaces long. And uh, this one over here is placing out all of your nurser, uh, nurseries, I believe. And that's, that's the idea of the game. The game is going going to end when either all of the walls have been placed out onto the board um, or you've somebody has scored a certain number of points based on the number of players games and I believe there's another way to win but or to trigger the end of the game once the game is triggered the ending everybody else except for that player will get a singular turn and whoever has the most points along this track here is going to be the winner of the game 
Silk. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward style game. A lot of complexity as to where you want to move your worms and whatnot, which we'll come up and discuss right now in my review. The first thing that I thought as soon as I saw the game was that's a unique theme. I've never seen something like that before. You are herding silkworms, attempting to gather silk, and utilizing your Mastiff and Shepherd to keep your silkworms from being eaten by the Oni as well as pestered by the other opponents, Shepherds and Mastiffs. Uh, there's rules as to how they all move. Like, for instance, the shepherd can move the dog, the dog can't move the shepherd, the shepherd can't move the oni, the dog can move the oni, the oni can't go into the dog space, uh, the oni moves the shepherd, and the oni eats the silkworms. Uh, <laughs> which, once you've gathered the, the basically <laughs> the, the circle of life there and how it works, it's, it's pretty straightforward and it, it makes sense in a way, right? The dog is trying to scare the oni away, but he's not more important than the shepherd, and the shepherd is afraid of the evil beast, but is the owner of the dog, and the beast is hungry for silkworms, obviously, uh, which works really great for the theme of this game. There, it's, the, the theme actually shines really well in this game. It feels like you're herding a flock of, I mean, technically it could be really anything, sheep or bulls or cows or whatever, uh, but the way in which it is put together is super cute. Uh, this game holds a lot of strategy, surprisingly, for a game that uh, is about herding silkworms. It kind of reminds me of the game Get Off My Land in a way, because you are building enclosures. But the thing is, enclosures aren't necessarily the greatest thing for you throughout the game because it limits the movement of your silkworms. And if your silkworms get stuck, you're not going to score points with them until the end of the game. So you're trying to eat and move on, eat and move on, flipping the tiles that have been eaten by growing them, and then continuing to eat. Eating is the most important thing in this game, making sure the Oni doesn't eat your specific silkworms, and making sure your silkworms eat the best type of pastures. And of course, the best type of pastures are on the board. It's very descriptive as to how it works and what the best places to go are. The six different actions are all useful on your turn. You're very likely to be able to do them, but if you don't, you'll have to spend a victory point to change the pip on your die in order to utilize the action. You'll start doing that more as the game progresses, and you get more victory points because you'll find out that you want to do a specific action that will cost you two points but in the long run it will gain you four so it's worth doing and you'll start seeing the benefits of losing victory points in order to gain them later you can play extremely aggressive in this game or passive the choice is yours there's no real uh one way or the other about it, I suppose, but if you spend too many victory points attempting to mess with the other players, it will cost you in the long run. You will need to specifically attempt to gather points yourself, uh, do a little bit of, of pushing, but only really when you need the area. Don't just go out and aggressively attack somebody, unless that's just your goal in the game, is to kind of uh, eat some silkworms with the Oni. You utilize it tactically, along with your Mastiff and your Shepherds. You can make your Mastiff scare away silkworm and make them be returned to their owner, it's a good way for them to not be able to eat in certain spaces. You can block off uh, worms from being able to feed over and over again by kind of placing them in a specific area and then blocking them off with a little uh, wall, but it's not going to help you in the long run because you need to have at least a two tile enclosure to get any points and a three for the major victory. You can get even larger ones if you like, and it becomes a little bit of an area control game. In fact, it, it's an area control game mini game inside of an area control game. Uh, this game we played with my cousins anywhere from ages of about, I would say about 13 or 14 and up is going to be pretty, uh, pretty capable of playing the game. Obviously, you probably want somebody about at least 15, 14 in order to really grasp the strategy in this game because there is quite a lot of it and you'll start seeing it come out as you play. Uh, one thing I can say about this game is as you're playing it, you may be in the lead, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win because the end of points scoring will actually come in handy. If players are going for specific goals, it might push them ahead as well. And as players learn how the game works, especially the first couple games here, you're going to start seeing that there's major point games uh, gains when it comes to eating the right area and not about having all your silkworms out. That's not as necessary. And even having them get eaten and not spending actions to put them on the board as opposed to just having them eat more might actually be worth doing. This game is all about choices, and I like choices. I like the fact that I feel like I can do whatever I want. I had a great time playing throughout the entire thing, and all of my cousins and my wife enjoyed this game as well. Uh, one of them was an extremely aggressive player. One was extremely passive. Uh, my wife was kind of somewhere in the middle, and I was just kind of like uh, an isolationist from Tapestry. I wanted to keep everybody away, and I wanted to be able to make my uh, me mechanic of just going back and forth. Eat, 
flip the tile over and move, eat, flip the tile over and move, and continue and continue. So you can kind of set up this little mechanism as long as players don't mess with you and you block them off with all of those walls. Now, the replayability comes in the fact that the board is ever changing and you're never going to know where the tiles are going to show up in, but it is going to be the same basic style of game each and every time. There's no other variance of play. It's two, three, and four players and you're moving around your little shepherds attempting to guide your silkworms into eating specific little areas. And uh, it's very, very very useful in that way. Uh, I like the fact that you can pull out the victory points to gain points. I think that's really unique. Uh, I like the fact that you always have to choose an action if you can, uh, so you can't kind of just dole around and do nothing. And uh, the quality of the pieces is great. All the mini all the little miniature um, little min miniature meeples, I guess they're called, let's see, a silkworm, a silk eeple, a sleekle? I don't know. And then you got a shepherd eagle and a meeple <laughs> and the mastiff meeple. Uh, and those are all really nice. The box comes in a really, really uh, nice looking artistic fashion. I think that the art is really, really cool. It's what drew me into the game to begin with. If you like a game with a good amount of theme that fits with the game and the mechanics, a little aggressive gameplay, as well as a strategic area control based game, this is something you're going to enjoy. If you don't like games that involve aggressive play, in which case people can specifically target you and eat your stuff, and if multiple people target you, it's going to be harder to come back from the game, which usually, if you play with a bunch of strategically minded people, it's more fair, but if you have people that are more aggressively minded, it might just cost you specifically the game or somebody else. Um, I can't think of a whole lot of things negative with the game specifically, other than just the type of game it is. It's going to be for certain people and not for others. Uh, the rules are fairly easy to understand after you got, I got through a little bit. After you start playing it, you start realizing how it functions. Uh, you're probably not going to understand the game fully the first half of the first playthrough, but after that you'll be okay. I explained pretty much all of the rules here in this video, so you won't necessarily need to look at the rule book. but for the different player setups, I would suggest you do do so and uh, yeah I, I enjoyed the game I thought it was a lot of fun and if it's something that you're interested in picking up you can check the link down below in the description have you played this game uh, why or why not is it something you're interested in let me know in the comment section I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about this one specifically uh, it's been on my radar for a while I was excited to take a look at it from Devere I've got a couple other games of theirs that are in that I will be pumping out videos for momentarily as I get to everybody down my list but yes Silk Excellent little thematic game of moving silkworms. They were so cute. Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It does greatly help us out. Hit that notification bell button and pick up the link in the description, the game uh, uh, down below. You can also go and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. You can also check out our live stream every Wednesday, which is today, 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. We give away games, we play games just like this one. And if you're interested, you can do that as well. Patreon helps out. Thank you, my great, my wonderful, gra uh, gracious, uh, generous patron backers for supporting us and letting us uh, have enough money to send you out games. And uh, also go ahead and check out our um, Discord, <laughs> Discord, where you can see us do uh, auctions. We do our Secret Santa every year. We'll have little things that we're going to be put up, up there. We have game nights. We have our live stream chat where you can discuss what games we want to play, what games we want to review and all that kind of stuff. It's a little community for us that you are welcome to be a part of. Also, please let me know. Uh, I'm always curious about how well you thought I did describing the game, giving, give me a critique regarding this video. What do you think I did wrong? Should I explain more negatives? Uh, what type of negatives are you more interested in seeing or mechanics? Uh, what types of positives did I not address in the game? Did I get any rules wrong? It's always good to do that. Uh, keep me on my toes. Link in the description. I'll pin your comment if it's something that I goofed on or if it's something I didn't cover that I think needs to be addressed. I like to do that and it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Regardless though, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to what herding silkworm with you next time.